The next morning when she woke up she felt like her heart was in her mouth sitting on her bed. She started thinking of ways to toughen her heart, to be able to see Liam in the office for the morning meeting that they had. She checked her phone, but to her this appointment, there were no calls or messages from Liam. But she had fifteen missed calls from Roy. She wanted to call him back, but then refrained herself, because there was no point discussing anything further. With a heavy heart, she opened her laptop, and started pouring her thoughts into her blog again. The other post that she dropped the day before had just two comments as well. But she was obviously not in the mood to read the comments. She didn't even bother to read, or even reply to the comment. She dragged herself, to get ready and left for office. Upon reaching the office she got to know that the meeting, that they were supposed to have was cancelled. Even though she was dreading the meeting, when she heard about it being cancelled she felt weird, like a pit in her stomach was enlarging. She couldn't understand why she was having all those thoughts which were at the extremes. She shook her head and decided to focus on her work, but then she heard her colleagues discussing, Yo guys, there is a big news. Scarlet is back. That was why our meeting was cancelled. What? Most of them exclaimed. Yeah, anyways I'm happy. Anything that takes the edge of that guy makes me happy. One of them said smiling. Yeah, ma'am. Finally, I will be able to see that guy happy again. Another person said inside. All the resolve that she had summoned in her heart broke at an instant after hearing what they all were saying she didn't cry yesterday, but today, after everything that she just heard from her colleagues, made her feel that truly this was real. Why couldn't I be the one to make you happy, Liam? She thought and ran towards the washroom to hide her tears, before they could notice that she was cry. She had her head down, and ran towards the washroom, so she didn't know there was someone at her front, until she bumped into the person. I am sorry, I really am, she said with her head still down, as she tried to continue with her ran. No, not this time, he said as he dragged her holding her hands. She lifted her head up to see Liam holding her hand, dragging her towards his office. Leave me alone, Liam, she said trying to struggle out of his grip. Don't force me to make a scene, he said and continued dragging her towards his office. Once they entered the office, he locked the main door immediately and that her then released her from his grips. What are you trying to do, mister? Liam, this is so unacceptable. I can see you for that, and you of all people knows, that Irene yelled, and then released her hand, out of his reach in one shot. Go ahead, he said calmly looking at her. He knew he would have to take it all. Her anger, her hatred, her bitterness. After all, he was the cause of them all. He had tortured her to death. But before you take one step outside, I would like to get some couple of answers from you first. He said, looking at her eyes. I am scared I can't help you, boss, if it's not a work-related question. She said, irritated. Of course you are going to answer me whether you like it or not, he said and inched closer towards her. Why did you disconnect Michael yesterday? He asked her. Because I was done listening to your ranting. She answered him bluntly. But I wasn't done talking. You didn't even give me time to explain myself to you. Irene, first hear me out. Why are you punishing yourself like this? And don't you know you are punishing me as well? He said softly and ran his fingers on her cheeks, trying to comfort her. The concrete structures of resolve and determination started dissolving inside her like they were made from candies. Liam, please don't, she said meekly. Why, Irene, I never knew that she faked the abortion, just to get into the reality show. I never knew that she still loved me and loves my child, too. I hated her then, because I thought she aborted my child, and now that I know she didn't, how can I turn my face away from them? Because they are my responsibilities, I cannot be a bad father, Irene. She looked into his eyes, and could feel the intense pang that he was going through. It was really not his fault. He was torn between duties and desire, and he was failing miserably in keeping both. I am not misunderstanding you, 
Oh, anything, Liam, you have a child to take care of, and I am the non-required fling here. I cannot be the person who wrecks someone else's home. Liam, I cannot, she said and took Liam's hand into her hands. What happened? She asked him caressing and running her fingers softly. She forgot of everything that was wrong immediately she saw the bruises on his hand. It's nothing, he said and removed his hand from her palm. How is this nothing? She asked him taking back his hand, forcefully into hers. She looked at his bruises with tears in her eyes and asked him, Does it still hurt? She asked him, If only she could see how much those words meant to him. How they made happy knowing that she still care about him. Yes, it does, he replied her looking into her eyes and paused. But it doesn't hurt there. It hurts here, he said as he roomed her hand and made her touch his chest. They both looked deeply into each other, understanding each other's pain and predicament. Tears started rolling down her eyes, and she crumbled into pieces. She couldn't take it any more as she kneeled on the ground. She hugged his leg and said, Yesterday I thought I would never get to say this to you, but I can't stand not telling you. I love you. Liam, I love you with all my heart, and because I love you I can't bear to see you like this. If you have ever loved me, or thought about me, even once, then promise me that you will be a good father to your child. Promise me that you will take good care of your child and Scarlet. Promise me, Liam, that you will forget about us. Tears were rolling down without any control from her eyes, and every single word of hers was tormenting his heart more and more. The day she got to tell him how she felt about him was the same day that she also decided to leave him. What a world! What are you talking about, Irene? What about me? What about what I feel and what I want? Liam said, lifting up her chin. This is what you want, Liam. You just doesn't know it yet, she said. He couldn't bear it any more and kneeled on the floor by her side. Is it that easy for you to forget about me, Irene? He asked her. Did you say easy, she chuckled. I am conjuring all my strength to be able to do this, Liam, she said. Then don't do it. It's not what I want and it's not what you want. So why are you now doing it? He asked her. It's not something that I want to do, Liam, but it's sure something that I need to do, Liam. She wiped away her tears and then raised her hand to wipe away the moisture in the corner of his eyes. Her lips moved closer to him. She badly wanted to kiss him for the last time, but she controlled herself. She took a deep breath and said, I cannot be your second, she told him. Then, without even waiting for a response from him, she got up and walked away. He kept looking in her direction and watched her frail figure disappear through the door. He sat there in the floor, unable to believe that such a thing had happened to him. The confession that his heart has been yearning for for long was brought to him all decorated in a platter, but the thing was also destroyed in a mulch, even if he heard her say, those three golden worlds, it pinched his heart, and pierced through his very own soul. His heart was broken into pieces, and he wasn't even sure if he would ever be able to mend it back. He couldn't gather up even a single bit of courage to stand up. He didn't even possess a morsel of strength to imagine a life without her. In just a few weeks, she had become his life. She had become his reason to live, and without her he could not find meaning in this life again. He was lost in his thought, when he had a knock on the door, followed David's voice. Come in, he told him. David entered the room, and saw Liam sitting miserably on the floor. He had seen Irene leaving his office, and he understood what was going through his boss's heart. He stood at a distance away from him, without saying anything, and waited for him to get up brace himself, before he spoke anything. Liam looked at David and said, Please just tell me you have something good for me this time, he had asked David hopefully. David reluctantly brought out an envelope from his pocket and placed it on the table before finally speaking up. That's the report. I personally picked it from the doctor's desk. And how everything been taken care of? Liam asked David. Yes, everything is clear. No trace is left. 
he said, and was about going out. But he changed his mind, and turned back to face his boss. I know I am in no position to say anything about your personal life. But this is something I guess you would love to read, he said, and headed a few torn and crumpled pages to Liam. What is this? Liam asked in surprise, and then saw the handwriting on the book, and then understood what it was. Um, she tore and threw them away in the dustbin. But I thought it's a paramount that you know about how much you meant to her, he said and left the office. Liam looked at those crumpled pages and her handwriting, her beautiful cursive writing, and the mistakes that she had scribbled and drew huge stars to hide them up brought nothing but insurmountable pain to his heart. He carefully folded those paper and carefully placed it in his jacket, and went to his seat to check the Pernate parental DNA test results. He could read just one word from the results. He felt like he had been struck by lightning. He couldn't understand how to feel about this, or even how to react he wanted to have his child so badly and now, that the child was proven to be his. Instead of being happy he was strangely upset about the whole thing. He felt like he was enclosed within a cage, and he had no way to escape he screamed at the top of his voices, and then threw all the stuffs that was on his table. A minute later when he had calmed down, he picked his phone and called Roy. Hey! Liam, what happened? She asked with lots of care and concern. I am finished, Roy. It's my child. Why am I being so selfish to an innocent unborn kid? What is wrong with me? Liam said and chugged a pail of pants searing through his heart. Are the DNA results are out? Roy asked him. Yes, I just got them not long ago, Liam said. I don't understand, Liam. How can it be your child? I had seen the abortion results with my own eyes. Did she lie to us back then? I just don't get it, Roy asked. As I said, I do not seek reasons to shrug away my responsibilities, Liam said. Roy didn't speak a word for some moments. Then he asked, Does Irene know about the test results? Roy asked. She never even doubted or questioned me, Roy. Not even for once. She didn't ask for any reason. I guess I have lots her forever, Roy. She has walked out of my life to make me happy. How do I tell her that I am not happy? Liam said and lost all his composure. He slumped on the chair, and couldn't and couldn't say anything else. Let my do the talking now. You focus on your work and your baby bro. No matter what happens, you are still the baby father I will figure out how we can deal with Scarlet and make that home. Roy said. Roy, Liam called and stopped. I can't breath without her, Liam said, and Roy could sense that he was already on the verge of breaking. You are not going to lose her. I am not going to let that happen. Just give me some time, Roy said, and his mind immediately started rummaging through ways to help his friend out. He disconnected the cowl and stared at the paternity test report, and then tore it into pieces, and throw it into the dustbin. He was just a thread away from losing his sanity, and that thread was lying in his pocket. He took out the pages Irene's diary, and started reading them one by one. You and I. You're touched, oh, so gently that it makes my heart melt like a candy. When you lips inches closer, I wanted you to stop. But God knows how tempting it was for me. Today, we danced like there was no tomorrow. It felt like we could never cross each other's path. You kissed me and said, Oh yes, baby, we will do it till infinity. Today we kissed. I melted in his arms, and it felt like he was mine to be with since ages. You know sometimes you just meet someone special and you just know at that instant that you are meant to be his. I guess I have find my special one today, and I do not intend to leave him until death do us part. He read her pages and could feel how she had bared her soul. He recollected every single breath of hers that he had felt on his skin, every single strands of her hair that tangled and stroked his face. He remembered how right it felt when he first saw her that day at her place of work. You had promised Irene. You had promised to never leave me. Please keep your promise. After disconnecting the cow with Liam, 
Roy called Irene again. He was hoping that at least this time she will pick his cow. He had been calling her multiple times, but she won't pick up his calls. He understood what the poor girl's heart might be going through, so he was patient with her. Though he has been working on moving from this town, which made him a little bit of town, but he was ready to make out time to talk to Irene. That's how much she means to his friend. Finally, on the umpteenth ring, she picked it up. Hey there, Irene, Roy said, sighing out of relief. Hi, Roy. How are you, Irene asked. I am good. I thought you wouldn't pick up this time, too. Roy said. Um, what happened? Irene asked her. Can we not waste our time over telephone conversation and talk about the big elephant in the room? Roy said with his usual serious tone. What do you want to talk about, Roy? Irene asked her. I don't want to discuss over the phone. I'm back in town, but right now I'm in the office. But I will be free by 6 p.m., so we can meet up. I will come to your to your office to pick you up, he told her. No, you don't have to worry. I will just order for Uber. Just send me the address of the place. I will be there. Irene said and sighed. Roy is someone she has come to understand that he has a very big place in Liam's heart. They are like brothers, so she takes him as an elder brother also. I don't know what you want to talk about, but didn't you think that there is no point in beating around the bush, Roy? Irene reasoned. I do not care if things make sense or makes point at this moment, because right now to me nothing makes sense at all. So if it will takes me beating around the bush for a hundred times to get to talk to you, then I will do it. All I want is for you to meet me up tonight. Roy told her and disconnected the cow. Irene didn't want to delve again into the depths of insurmountable pain. She didn't want to discuss about the whole issue again, but since it was Roy she couldn't say no. Life indeed was giving her lemons. But she was determined to fight back. She started her system and completed the assignment she still had with her, and handed it over to her colleague. She had some time left before she could go and meet up with Roy, so she decided to work on her blog again. She opened the blog and saw some couple of comments on her last post. Somehow her heart was gladdened by reading the comments. Like someone was caressing her, and telling her that everything was going to be fine. She thanked them. Roy saw her figure approaching and waved at her. Once seated they both found a bit of awkwardness between them, but Roy being Roy, decided to take the rein of the conversation. Did you get to talk with Liam? Roy asked her. Yeah. She replied. So that means you are fully aware of the whole situation, right? She asked yet again. Uh huh. She replied him. Hearing her Roy handed her a cosmopolitan, and continued sipping on her drink. Then I'm sure that you must be clear with the fact that all this is not his fault, or neither is it your fault, but you guys are just punishing yourselves for nothing. Roy said looking straight at her face. Irene gulped the whole drink after hearing him out and say, Punishing? How am I punishing him? I am giving him what he wants he always wanted a kid, and to have a family of his own. So I am just punishing myself to help him achieve his goal. Yes, that's true, that he had always wanted a baby with Scarlet, because he was in love with her at that time, but now he's in love with you. He also wanted to have a family, but a family, with you not just any family, Irene, Roy said still looking at her. A family with me. Then what happened about the baby? What about Scarlet is he just going to leave then just because of me? Heaven will never forgive me if he does such a thing to them just because of me. Irene said and tear up a bit. But all the alcohol she had taken were making her more unnerved. Yes, he wants the baby and no, he doesn't want anything to do with Scarlet any more. Roy said. But he loves her, Roy. They were even engaged and now she's giving birth to his child. Irene said. Loved, now that's a past tense. Roy said. When Irene heard her word, she was a little bit comforted. So she picked up her glass which had been refilled and chugged it again, forgetting how low her alcohol tolerance was. I don't know, Roy, what I want, 
I really don't care about what I want, but I just want him to be happy. I want whatever that makes him happy, Irene said. Roy heard her head and said, You make him happy, Irene. He can't take a proper breath without you in his life. He was in such disbelief that he even ordered for a DNA test to be done, just to confirm that it was his child. So now you can understand how much he didn't want all this to happen. Roy told her looking at her face, which was showing that she was already a little bit tipsy. What? When, Irene asked in surprise. He did it the day after she returned back here, Irene. Even can tell how much he wanted all this to be a lie, Roy told her. Irene looked silently at the cocktail glass that she had empty. You see, my friend was never this miserable Irene, not even when Scarlet left making us all believe that she had aborted the child. Does this not tell you anything? He asked Irene. Irene was circling the brim of the glass with her fingers, and suddenly stopped and looked up to Roy. Does he love me to the extent of forgetting about Scarlet for my sake? Will my love be enough for him to do such? Please tell me, Roy, she asked, and her voice was almost in the verge of pleading. Why don't you direct that question to him, Roy said and smirked. Irene could instantly feel the presence of someone behind her back. The person's hand rested on the back of her chair, slightly touching her back. Then she recognized it was not just anybody, but the only person that makes her heart melt, even without touching it. No way, she screamed in her head. She turned her back and saw his face. His face looked like it has been devoid of any emotions since ages. He looked like a slate, all blank. Her heart came into her mouth, seeing him in this horrible state. What are you doing here? Irene asked, staring at him. I asked him to come, Roy said, looking at them both. You guys need to clear out whatever is in your minds that is bringing you down. I don't think there is any point in suffering so much. Be truthful to each other and tell yourselves what your heart wants. So I'm gonna go with now. I have other things to attend to, he said and picked up his car keys and left them. Hopefully they will be able to sort things out. Mind if I join you? Liam asked, moving towards her front. You are already here, so yes. You can join, Irene said and nodded. He ordered for some drinks and sat silently in front of her. His heart was aching to take her hand in his and assure her that all was well, but something from inside stops him. Probably this isn't the right time to take such move. He sipped on his whiskey and kept looking at her face like he was trying to communicate with her even without talking, but then it's impossible for them to communicate like that. Not when her head was hung low, like she was avoiding looking into his face. She was already a bit tipsy, so she wanted to avoid any question that would be coming from him, because she knew that her was lost somewhere around the corner, a bit far away from her. Then finally he broke the silence and asked, How was your day? He asked her, Oh, it was very, very productive. I really a lot of work to ease my mind. Her voice trailed of as he moved his hand, and his fingers touched hers, which were still fitting with the empty glass. Her fingers stayed on the glass, static like they were glued to it. He then slowly removed the glass underneath, and took her hand, completely into her his own hand, his thumb grazing lightly over her plus point. Stop fidgeting, Irene, he said and kept on running his fingers on her smoothly. Her breath became all shallow, and she knew he was overpowering her. She was already a bit high, and she knew that this wasn't good at all, because pretty soon she will turning into an emotional wreck in front of him, so she tried to free her hands out from his in the moment. She tried to do so. He tightened his grip on her even more. Don't, he said, looking into her eyes trying to peel off all the layers that she had put on to shield herself from him. She gasped for air and then said, I need to go home. By then she was already tearing up. He wanted to talk with her so badly, but she how hurt and how hard she was trying not to break down. He couldn't stop her from doing what she wanted. He called for the waiter paid for Thier drink. I will drop you home then, Liam said, and picked up her bag. 
just as he was about to pick his phone and put in her pocket, his screen light up with a cow from Scarlet. Irene saw the name of the caller and her inside cringing. He dodged the cowl and placed the phone in his pocket, and extended his hand, for her to hold on to, and get up from the seat. But she didn't even look at him not to talk of the hand he offered. She just stood up on her own, and walked away from him. But Hadley had she taken two steps, she twisted her ankle, and immediately fell back on the floor, screaming. He rushed towards her immediately, and without even saying anything to her. He scooped her swiftly into his arms in a bridal style. Leave me alone, Liam. Let go of me. She said landing small, small punches on his chest, but that didn't stop him from walking towards where he had parked his car. She kept struggling for a while. When she saw that it was not helping her in any way, her anger began to slow down as they converted into tears. Instead of punching his chest, her hands moved and tug his shirt collar. She looked up to his eyes and said, Why can't you just leave me alone? Liam, please make me forget about you. Please make it easier for me to forget you, please. Just help me. She begged and cried at the same time. He brought her even closer to his chest. Slowly her hands moved to surround his neck, and her face, lie peacefully, on his chest her tears, slowly drenching his chest, marking their territory, she had embraced him, so perfectly that he didn't want her to ever let go. When her reach knew his car, he gently spoke close to her ears, bending his head down. Can I? Can I just put you down for a second? Hum. I am sorry, Irene said, realizing that she had already branched the limits of proximity, which she had pledged not to. I think you should head back home. Scarlet was calling you just now. I think she and her baby needs you. I can take an Uber from here. You don't have to worry about me, she said and cleaned the trace of tears on her cheeks. Suddenly she felt a few drops of water running on her. She looked up and it was then that it down on her that it was already raining. Just get in the car, he said and opened the door for her. She knew that there was no way that she could win over him if she starts changing words with him so she just gave up and entered the car. Few minutes into the drive, they were both silent waiting for who to break the awkwardness between them both, and the silence somehow increased her tipsiness. She suddenly felt her head, like it was beginning to get bigger and bigger, and then she started feeling all wired. Liam, she snapped suddenly looking towards him. I feel funny, she said. Wait. What? He panicked and parked the car at one side of the road. She looked at him and felt like all that she wanted right now was to kiss her really badly. Her desires had slowly started to overpower her. Alcohol was clearly playing with her mind. She shook her head vehemently, as if she was trying to push her thoughts away. What's wrong? What's happening? Liam asked her all worried and held her hands. Why are you so warm? Are you running a fever? He asked after touching her hand, and moved closer to touch her forehead, with the back of his palm. Why he was doing so his eyes locked on hers, which were looking at him intently. What's wrong, Irene? Tell me. He asked, unable to understand what was going on. Go away from me, she said and opened the door of the car and came outside. The rain slowly drenched her trying to pacify her body, her mind and her soul. Are you out of your mind? What in heaven's sake do you think you are doing? Liam asked as he tried to grab her hand and make her stay in the car. But she struggled to fight his hand of her and said, Please, Liam, let go of me. This time her eyes were pleading for mercy. He released the grip that he had on her hand immediately. She was already crying by then. Her tears mixed with the drops of water, and then flowed down her cheeks, like a flowing river, all perennial. She was wet from her top to her bottom, her clothes, clung to her curves, and all the opaqueness that it had, reduced to translucency. He could see her tender pale skin, her shivering silhouette, and her fast-beating heart, which caused her to heave. He couldn't stop himself seeing her in such condition. Please! Can you just get into the car? Liam asked, staring at her. No, 
I don't want to, Irene answered him. Fine, then, he said and leaned onto her, pushing her to make her body rest alone on the car. He then removed his jacket and put it over her, shielding her from the torrential rain. If you are not entering the car, then stay like this, he said and move her closer to her. Even if it was cold. Their warm breaths were heating up the whole atmosphere around them. She looked up at him with horror, and then her eyes, slightly fluttered, as her moved his face even closer. Drops of water dripped from his nose and lips, and chin fell on her face. She couldn't understand what she could do to escape from him. Her wild mind was racing at an exponential speed. He didn't even touch her, but his mere presence was enough to drive her crazy, and before she knew it she raised her hand, and tugged his shirt collar, and pulled him closer. She looked into his eyes for a second, and then gently touched his lips with her own lips. Her lips quivered as she touched his. Seconds later, he parted his lips, trying to make every single inch of his lips wet. She tried to capture his taste for a moment, but she didn't realize that she had gotten lost in his touch. But as soon as she got herself back, she detached herself from him. She could not believe that she could do such a thing. He was lost in her taste, and suddenly she detached herself from him forcefully. Before he could even understand what and why she did it, she had covered her mouth with her hand, and was shaking her head in disbelief. His heart wasn't satisfied, as he was still craving for more. He threw his jacket on the road, and held her waist, drawing her closer to himself. As his hand grazed through her wet back, she knew instantly that at his point things could go wrong. But it seems like that was what Liam needed, though. He pulled her closer and kissed the crevices of her neck. As his other hand started tracing her thoughts and she instantly whispered, Don't touch me, Liam, she blunt out. And with that he stopped. He looked at her in the eyes and asked her, Tell me, what do you want from me? She just looked up to him, but she didn't answer his question. She thought that probably silence would be the best answer in such case. But Liam, on the other hand, could not bear her keeping him quiet. One moment you are the one kissing me, and the other moment you treat me like I was the last thing on earth, that you would want to touch you. Am I a toy to you, Irene? Is that what you take me for? A toy that you can decide when to play with and when not to play with? He asked her angrily. I take you as a toy. Seriously, that is what you have to say right now? That's the only thing you can say, after all that we have been through together, for this last few weeks. Am I so shallow to you? Irene asked with pains in her voice. Then look into my eyes and hold my hand, and tell me what your heart wants, Liam said and moved closer. You want to know what my heart really wants? Okay, then. My heart wants you to be mine and mine only. I don't want to share you with anyone not even Scarlet or your child. I know it's your baby, your flesh and blood, but if you want a baby, and a family, then have it with me, can you? Can you leave her and come back to me, and wipe her out of our lives, like she never existed in the first place? Can you? Liam, can you? She asked all in one breath and looked deep into his eyes, like she was trying to figure out his reaction. You see, I know you can't. No one can. I know what my heart wants is selfish, but you asked for it. So there you go. That is what my heart wants, she said and took a step back. What if I told you now that, that is exactly what I want also? Liam asked, looking into her eyes. What are you saying? Irene asked, confused. She never had expected that he would say such a thing. What I'm saying it, I understand that the child is my responsibility, and I want to support, in any way possible, but that doesn't mean that I want to be with Scarlet. The only relationship I have with her right now is that she is the mother of my child. He said and waited for an answer from her. So you don't love her any more? She asked him. No. Not any more, he said. Then why is she staying with you? She asked. That's because she still thinks I'm still in love with her. So she still feels like my house is also her house well technical. She does now as she is with my kid. 
but not reality, am planning on moving her to a separate house. I will arrange for a proper house that would be comfortable for her and the baby. He assured her, Did you truly? But then she stopped like she just remembered something. What do you want to ask, Irene? Ask me now. I don't want to carry any more baggages once we leave here. He told her, Does she know about me yet? She asked him, I guess, but she is going to know about everything today. I will rectify everything today. Rectify? As in who? She was eager to know. You will find out soon, he said and opened his car door, so that she could get in. Where are we heading to Liam? Irene had to ask, because the road they took was nowhere close to her house. To my place, he answered and sped through. Yeah. No, no, no. Liam, please don't do that. I am not in a good state. Please don't create more troubles for me. You tell her later when the time is right. And that is definitely not today, Irene told him. When the time is right. Are you kidding me right now? You think the time can ever be right when we are like this? He asked, looking into her eyes. Rain had started to pour heavily, and it was quite risky to drive, but he still continued. Irene wanted to stop him, but the rage in his eyes got her really scared. She was silenced by his reply. Suddenly his tires skid in the rain, and his car was swiveled. He was already driving in full speed. He instantly slammed his brakes and his car came to a standstill in a split second. God, I'm sorry, Irene. Are you okay? He asked her all worried. She had her eyes closed and her fists clenched with fear. She opened her eyes once she heard his voice. I am okay, she said and then looked down to see his hand embracing her chest as touch, was now making her restless every passing second. She gasped for air, and then conjuring all her strength and sanity together she said, Um, your hand, she said awkwardly. It was then that he realized that his hands were placed on her chest. He immediately retracted his arm, but he couldn't retract the surge of feelings rushing within him. He quickly unbuckled his seat belt, and leaned on to her, and kissed her forehead. Then he ran his fingers on her face and said, I am sorry, I was a bit rash, he said. It's risky to drive right now. We will have to wait. We can continue once the rain stops a bit. He said and focused his attention to his mobile phone. He didn't look at her not even once afterwards. Seconds passed, minutes passed still in silence. Then she began to feel restless. Are you angry with me? Irene asked him. No, he said, but still not looking her way. Then why are you not looking at me? She asked him. Why should I look at you? So that in the next two minutes you tell me to not look at you again. Because it's making you uncomfortable. Liam asked sarcastically. Why are you like this? Irene asked with tears in her eyes. It's because of you, he said and turned to look at her. Look what you have turned me into. I can't sleep. I can't breath without you. I have no self-restraint when it comes to you. I will do anything to your trust, and I don't care what's happening in the third world, because of it. I don't care what it takes, but today I'm going to make it all clear how much you mean to. He wiped the tears that was in her eyes, and kissed her eyes. She looked into his eyes, which were brimming with sincerity, and then placed her hand on his hand, which were on her cheeks, and said, I trust you more than I trust myself, Liam, and you don't have to prove anything to me. I feel every bit of love that you have in your mind for me. But not every love is fated to be together. Maybe our love is that time. She said after saying that she picked his hand from her lap. Then you don't understand how much I love you, and how much I want you right now and right here. He said with a hoarse voice. I am losing my mind, Irene. I can't stand it any more. So let me make everything clear now. When I am just a string away from losing my patience, why is it so difficult for you to understand that is you and only you that I want? You are not jeopardizing her life. You are just ruining my mind by not believing in me. To stop arguing with me, because I might just lose my mind with you sitting close to me like this right now. He sighed and then rested his hands back on the steering wheel. 
Then why? She asked him. Why? You want to know why? Then come and feel my heart. It kills me any time you are around me. My hands itches to touch you. My lips wants no other taste than yours. And I want to love you in a ways that you can't even imagine in your head. He said and became quiet. Suddenly there was absolute silence in between them, and the only sound that were heard was that of the dropping on the windshield. Then suddenly her entire demeanor changed, and she turned towards him. Then show me, she said, looking at him, her eyes raging with the fires of desires. The Ryan, his hot breath, his smell had already rendered her hopeless, and hearing those words of his she couldn't help but speak her mind. He couldn't believe what he just heard. He looked at her in disbelief, and lost all the words and his capacity of speaking. His hands moved and unbuckled her seat belt in a second, and then he moved his seat back. He held her waist and then with one swift move, he pulled her towards himself, and made her sit on his laps. He heard her face tenderly in his hand, and kissed her, with such a hunger-like soul, had been deprived of everything since centuries. The slow tender kiss slowly turned into an urgent one. He started with nibbling her lips, and then moved to bite on the other, inch by inch of his by lips. Not even sparing her one second, there was no mercy to be given. There was no limit that needed to be maintained. As his hands traced all over her body, she shivered with pleasure, and melted in his hand. As his mouth moved to her chin, and the curve of her neck, she moaned and arched her back and closed her eyes. His hands pulled her shirt, which was tucked in the jeans. His right hand slid under her shirt, grazing her skin, over so tenderly, that she came forward, and hugged him tight. His hand loitered around, and moved to the center of her back. He was about to enclapse her bra. His fingers twined around the hook, eager to unhook it in any second. But he stopped himself, and invoked all his strength and asked her, If you want me to stop, you can tell me to stop now. Scarlet started pacing in the house, all angry, when Liam didn't take her calls. She tried again, but all her efforts went in vain. U-G-G-G-H-H-H, why is he not taking my calls? She panicked, getting all irritated. She decided to cal through his office line, and then she got to know that he had left the office an hour back, hearing that her heart started wandering in all random directions. Is he out with that bitch? She thought. Am I going to be deserted because of that slut? She thought to herself, and started cursing Irene. Then she dashed to the kitchen and made him a black coffee for herself and drank. Then she went to the guest room, and looked at all her luggages, that had been brought in. She was shocked earlier when Liam had asked for her luggages, to be moved into the guest room. She was sure that she would move back to his bedroom in no time, so she just made a face, but didn't say anything. But the thought of him being with Irene was something that made her very upset. She took one of her suitcase, and moved it to his room, and ran to get clothes in his closet. She then laid her makeup products, neatly at the vanity, and then gave a pleasing look at the bedroom, which now gave a vibe, that the room was made for couples. A shrewd smile etched on her face, as she danced around merrily with a twirl. Then she checked her phone again. But alas, there was still no message from Liam. In a mad fit of rage, she went down and picked up her car keys, and started in the direction of his office. She didn't know if she would be able to find him. She didn't know if the direction was okay. But she just continued driving, hoping to catch them on a coffee shop or a restaurant. It was pouring very heavily, but she wanted to defy the wrath of nature with her own immaturity. She drove for like two miles, and then suddenly she stopped. Then she pulled her car back a few feet. And there it was, Liam's car at the side of the road, with the hazard light, on all scared, that something might have happened to him. She immediately rushed down from the car, and ran to the other side of the road. The moment she got close, she saw Irene moving forward and hugging Liam, her body twining on Liam's car, like a climber. Liam's hand, swiftly moving under her shirt, exploring her her back. 
Her anger spiked in an instant, and she started banging on the door incessantly. Open the door, Liam. Scarlet screamed on top of her lungs. The both looked at her obviously surprised with her present. Irene felt like she was stuck with a volt lightning. She quickly moved back to her seat and adjusted her clothes. Liam couldn't believe his ill luck. Of all people it was Scarlet that would be here banging on his door. Making a straight face, he came out from the car and closed the door behind him with an unsurmountable anger. The thud sound of the closing door was so loud that even deafening noise, if rain thunder, had no chance in front of it. Why are you here? He roared like a wounded lion. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that question? What in God's name are you doing here? Scarlet asked her, screaming like a mad woman. Irene also came out from the car and stood outside. She wanted to explain and clear out things between them. She was ready to take all the blame on herself. She didn't want to be the one that created a wedge between this two. She moved closer to Scarlet, so that she could explain the whole thing to her first, because she knew that if Liam spoke then probably he would sabotage his relationship with Scarlet, in a blink of an eye. It's my fault, Scarlet. Please just let me explain. Today I went. Slap. Ow. Irene shouted, holding her cheeks. Scarlet just gave her a very dirty slap across her face. Liam's eyes was filled with rage, see his woman hurt, and without thinking he immediately rushed his hand to hit Scarlet. But Irene's timing was quite perfect, because she rushed forward and blocked him. She pushed him back with all the strength that she had on her. She looked at him in the eyes and said, If you trust me, then let me handle this, please, she begged him. Liam didn't say a word. His fists were clenched, and all his veins were puffing out, but he knew that Irene was matured enough to make decisions, so he respected her, her ability to make the right decision and went into the car. Irene then turned towards Scarlet. But now she was no longer in the mood to play the blame game again. Look, I get it that you are mad. But I don't blame you for that because I would have done the same if I were in your shoes. But you have to know that none of this was his fault. We both love each other and somehow we strayed a bit because of everything that was going on. It might look all wrong to you, but trust me her is not cheating behind your back. He still has the same respect for you and still wants to father your child the same way that he also wanted few months back. Cheating behind my back. You are explaining to me that all this that is happening is behind my back. You are stealing him right under my nose, but trust me I am not going to let that happen. She hissed at her. Hearing her spout words like venom, Irene was silent for a while, but then she continued to defend herself again. I am not stealing anything from under your nose, or inside you know Scarlet. He isn't yours to begin with. You left him. You killed all the feelings he had for you and you orphaned him, in the worst possible way, that you could and you still expect him to be yours. Is that not pure foolishness? Irene asked her with a smirk on her face. You know nothing, Irene. You were just something to fill his void. But you are forgetting that I am his entirety. I make him complete, not you, she said and caressed her belly with a victorious smile on her face. And suddenly just like that the smirk on Irene's face was wiped up. Scarlet's lips curled into a smile as she saw Irene's face fall. With confidence she took a step ahead and came closer to her and said, So go ahead, Miss Irene, and flirt the whole day with my man, because eventually in the night he will come back to me. I am his nest, Irene. I am his home, a home where we start a family together. Do you seriously think that you can sway him away from me and my child? Think hard, Irene, because deep down your heart you know you can't. So you can be my guest whenever you so please. But I will always be there to make sure you don't overstay your welcome. After saying all this she turned and went straight to her car without turning back. Irene stood there all dumbstruck. Scarlet's words echoed in her head, like they were the words of internal truth. She felt like the ground beneath her was moving. She felt like her entire world— was coming to an end with a force. 
When Liam saw Irene leaving, he came out of the car. He looked at her, and in one instant he knew that Scarlet had said something to hurt her. He could clearly see that her feelings were crushed. Upon he instantly regretted his decision, of letting her take care of things her own way. She was again drenched completely, and her teeth were chattering all cold. Even though her face was drenched with the water from the rain, he could still see the tears rolling down her face. He moved closer and said, Come back into the car, so that you will not catch cold from this rain. She looked up to him and said, Why do you care so much for me, Liam? Just why? And just like that all her strength, all her guts were washed away with the raindrops. He stood there in silence at first, but then moved a little bit forward. The intensity of the rain had reduced a bit, and under the street light, now, he could clearly see red mark, under the left side of her cheeks. He moved his hands softly and touched her bruise and said, From now on you are not going to fight any battle on your own. All your battles are mine now. Do you understand that? But, no ifs and buts are allowed now. You are my responsibility and only mine. You need to promise me now that we are in this together. He said and looked into her eyes, like they were endless abyss. I promised. She said and looked into his eyes. The rain had almost slowed down by then, and all that was left was a cool breeze and dizzle. He ran his hand gently on her cheeks and asked, Does it hurt? She smiled at him and said, I would be lying if I say it doesn't. Wouldn't I? Don't worry I have a balm for that, he said and smiled and moved towards her reducing every inch of gap between the both of them. He placed his hand on her waist, and then leaned on her, and started kissing her left cheeks tenderly. He planted his kisses in a line, one after the other in succession, covering every inch, every centimeter of her skin. He wanted to take away all the pain that she felt and make them his own. He had decided that before being her lover, he had to be her protector, be her shield. Slowly his hand moved under her shirt, as he continued his ascension. He knew that his touch always left her breathless, and he enjoyed seeing her all defenseless in his arms. He paused and smiled and quickly turned her in such a way that her back was resting on his chest. He then embraced her from behind, his one hand on her waist, and one on her chest and held her tight, like he was afraid to let her go. He buried his head low touching her neck and said, I want to finish up the homework that I left and finished earlier. Irene understood what he meant exactly. She blushed all scarlet and turned back and said, I think I should wait. Then she looked into his eyes trying to comfort him, because she knew that he would definitely be disappointed with her answer. He looked at her and pursed his lips all disappointed and said, Fine. I agree with that. But then you have to do something else for me. Are you okay with that? Anything. Just say it, she said and hugged him back. Then come to my place with me today, he said and held her hand, dragging her towards the car. No, Liam, no, Irene tried to protest. You cannot back out now. You already promised me, he said and started the car. I cannot let anyone point a finger at him, and Scarlet dared to touch you it needs to be addressed, he said and turned on the car heater warm her up. He looked at her and said, Just promise to stay with me, and I will show you how much I love you, how much you mean to me. She smiled and looked at him, but inside her she was as scared as hell. Liam's car sped through the darkness towards his home. Scarlet reached back home all fuming, and started throwing away everything that she could find in her way. Although she smiled and mocked Irene before she came back, deep down she already knew that she had lost the battle to Irene. She had fired all her shorts to scare her away, but she knew that they were all blanks. Although she had the biggest weapon lying in her stomach, but she still knew that Irene had done a clean sweep, leaving no say for her to even crawl inside. Unable to accept the defeat in the hand of a mere eighteen years old baby. Her pride turned all to rev again. It was hardly ten minutes she had arrived and she heard the sound of Liam's car driving in. She immediately marched out, wanting to the reprimand him, 
make him answer her questions which were ranging like fire inside of her. But then she saw Irene getting down from the passenger's side, and she just halted. The jolt that she had received earlier was massive, but this was just below the belt. He had brought her back home. He had brought her to his net. What on earth were you thinking, Liam? Why did you bring her here? Scarlet hissed in anger, and stood at the entrance. Liam calmly closed the door of his car, and went to Irene's side, and held her hand, to bring her inside his house. Scarlet looked at Irene with her eyes gleaming with hatred. She just couldn't believe that she would still have the courage to come back to her place, even after she had clearly demarcated her territory. I really need to buy a vowel for you I don't know how to weigh your audacity, to be able to march inside my house right now. Scarlet said, A slight correction, it's my house. It's under my name. I don't remember writing your name along with mine on the documents. Liam spoke with calmness and tools his steps into the house. But Irene resisted. Somehow this whole thing was not easy for her to deal with. If it was just Scarlet, then she would have known where to start from and how to deal with her. But with the baby her hands were tied. Seeing her hesitating to come inside, Liam turned back and said, What? It's not like this is your first time of coming to this place. Then he deliberately turned towards Scarlet to see what her reaction would be when she knows that Irene has been here before. She was choking on her own spit. This guy was downright shrewd. He was the epitome of a slow poison, who made sure that he kills you in every second, and make you taste death, even before your time. He pulled Irene inside with his hands, which were clasped in hers freed itself, to embrace her from the behind. Come inside. You need to change your clothes, or else you are going to catch a cold, Liam said and headed towards the direction of his room. Stop it. Just stop all this nonsense once and for all. I know that I hurt you and left you, when you needed me the most. I know that I toyed with your feelings. I was the flag-bearer of your miseries. But is this the way you choose to punish me for what I did? I have already sought for your forgiveness. Liam, what else do you want me to do? Just tell me and I will do it. But for God's sake, stop. All this farce. I can't take it any more, Liam. She cried and hugged his arm. Liam shrugged her of the nest very seconds and chuckled. Why does it always have to be about you, Scarlet? Why do you think that everything is always about you? Don't you think you have over-assumed your importance in my life? He asked and folded his arms. Scarlet sensed something bad was coming up for her. It was a red flag, whenever he folded his arms. His demeanor completely changes in an instant. His eyes burnt like charcoal, because he remembered how she had slapped Irene earlier. I liked you, but that was in the past. You were important to me. Again, that was in the past. I wanted to spend all my life with you. Again, that was in the past. But right now I am a clean slate scarlet, with zero ounces of love, and fuck to give you. It would be really nice if you could put your shit together, and understand the fact that I care about you. But that is not because I love you or anything. But that's because I care about my child. And that's it. He finished his sentence but Scarlet felt like he had whitewashed her entirety. A moment before, she was gloating by recollecting the way she made Irene's face fall. But right now her own face had fallen. And the fall wasn't a small one, and it definitely wasn't an easy one to recover from. She might have physically slapped Irene, but she returned the slap even bigger and louder. She didn't even have to touch her to do that. She looked in Irene's direction, and saw her standing with a face filled with shock. Wow, just wow, she said, and she started slow claps, and looked at Irene, like she was spouting venom through her eyes. Are you not happy now after ruining a family? You must be gloating in your head right now, seeing me all miserable like this. It must have felt really great for you to see me succumb to you. Isn't it? Scarlet, see, please try to understand that I am not here to snatch away. Anything, neither do I wish to gloat over anything. I would never try to come between you and Liam or your child. Trust me, I just wish that you understand I have no bad intention towards you or your baby. 
Irene tried to explain herself, but she knew that all that was going into the drain. It was hard to convince her. Trust you. You are kidding me right. Who could I trust you? You a little brat that is trying to steal my man from me. You must be funny. Scarlet said and chuckled. Enough, Scarlet, Liam shouted at her. Enough. You mean this is enough for you? But what about me, Liam? You expect me to bear the fact that I, the mother of your child, has to stay in the guest room, why she gets to be the queen adorning your king-size bed. Why does my child have to suffer for my sin? Why are we the outcast of your life, Liam? Do you want to see me stepped on, pounced upon, and tormented every single day, with her mere presence? Will the baby be able to bear it when its mother can't? If not for me, but at least think of your child's health. What sort of a father are you planning to become to my child? She said and looked at him. She knew that she had hit his weak point. Liam took a few deep breaths to control his anger. He didn't want to fight with her any more, because he knew that stressing her also means stressing out his child, and he didn't want that to happen at all in the fit of rage. He had forgotten about the safety of his child. He took a deep breath and held Irene's hands and said, Come, and her took her hand, and took her to his bedroom. Unable to bear the sight, Scarlet started choking and asked, Why are you doing this, Liam? He paused and turned back and looked at Irene fondly, for a second then, and said, Because she is my present. Liam took Irene upstairs to his bedroom. This was the first time that she had visited his room. There were a couple of beer cans on his side table, and as she entered she saw papers under the beer cans, and somehow the papers looked familiar to her. Out of curiosity, she walked towards his side table, and immediately picked up the papers. They were the torn pages from her diary. She turned back and looked at him in surprise. She was trying to understand how on earth they got here. She turned to ask Liam of how they got here, but before she could say anything, Liam was quick to ask her, Isn't it a bad manners to touch other people's stuff without their permission? Liam asked and dragged the papers from her hand and put them in his drawer. Now, that was exactly my question for you, Irene said and smiled. Go and take a hot shower and dry yourself up. I have some business to take care of, Liam said and started walking out. What business? Irene asked with a worried look on her face. It doesn't concern you. You better scoot or else I'm going to throw you into the bathtub myself. Liam said and left the room. Irene stood there and sighed. Then she turned and went to the bathroom. After coming out from the room, Liam called David immediately heading downstairs to the guest room. There were a couple of things that needed to be taken care of immediately. But he didn't want to do any of those in front of Irene, so it was best if he do them now, that she was still in the bathroom. Open the door, Scarlet. It's me. Liam said knocking on the guest room door. What now? She asked, opening the door with irritation on her. We need to talk about a couple of things right now, and sort them out at once, he said and sat on one of the sofa, inside the guest room. First... I need you to pack all your stuffs, because I have arranged for an alternative accommodation for you. This house might be a bit smaller for you and my child. My assistant will come and pick you here in let me say less than thirty minutes. If anything is left here don't worry, I will make sure they are all delivered to your new address. It's a cool area, you will love it there, Liam spoke with all seriousness. Are you kidding me right now, Liam? Are you out of your freaking mind? Where am I supposed to stay away from you, when we are going to have a child together? We have so many things to do which are still pending. We need to fix a date to get married, get all the proper tests done for your kid, paint the nursery, make necessary arrangements and all. Scarlet spoke all shocked. Did you hit your head on the wall, or anything related to that? When did I tell you that I was going to get married to you? Liam spoke with surprise. You don't need to tell me that we are getting married before I know that. We are already engaged and now we are expecting our first child together. So don't you think it's paramount that we get married? 
What kind of life do you want to give to our child? Do you want me to raise your child as a fatherless child? Liam, is that what you want? Scarlet lashed out on him in anger. I never told you that you were going to raise the child fatherless. I am cutting all my ties with you, Scarlet, but not with my child. My child still stays my top priority. Liam said and gave Scarlet a serious look. Scarlet was out of her wits. She understood that no amount of crying or sobbing or wailing was going to change the situation. She was just astonished to see Liam just totally changed his attitude towards her. He was the same guy who waited hours and hours for her classes to finish, the same guy who fought against his family for her sake, the same guy that she thought would never be able to get over her when she left. She couldn't believe that he had turned to Greece. Liam, don't you think you are being too harsh and irritational now? Let's talk it out tomorrow morning, okay? She said, trying to convince him, and held his hand. Harsh? Do you think this is harsh? Harsh was what you did to Irene. Harsh was the slap you gave to that poor girl, who have thought of nothing but good towards you. She wanted to leave me so that we could have a happy family together. She was ready to sacrifice her love, and you stand here telling me that I am irritational. It's you who is being irritational here, Scarlet, and I am not going to tolerate any of it any more in my house. Liam said, trying so hard to keep his calm. Just then the doorbell rang. That must be my assistant, David. Liam said and went to get the door. David gave a file to Liam and pointed at one page document. He read the page and his face instantly burned in anger. He then folded it and placed it in his pocket. David saw the burning rage in his eyes and immediately understood that he had to handle the situation. Then he took the file back from Liam and handed it to Scarlet and said, "This is a legal document and you need to sign since you guys aren't married. There are some legal protocols that should be followed for the betterment of both parties. He will be taking full paternal responsibilities and would be contributing his part for this child up." bringing for a reasonable period, which is till the point you get back to work. So please read all the clauses, carefully, because you will be clearly stating that you have no right whatsoever on any of his properties, or company and for that matter, his life also. You cannot force him to stay with you as per legal terms, but still as a concerned and responsible father, he is going to provide you the best accommodation possible as per his pocket. Scarlet felt like she has been face slapped again. David saw her glaring at him, but he did not feel intimidated at all. He had handled many masterpieces like her before. So maintaining his quiet composure, he spoke again. In case you have any doubts regarding the legal paperwork, then you can call me any time. My contact number is on the last page, after the annex. Your Miss Scarlet. She looked at him with anger. She wanted so badly to roast him alive, but he politely returned back her look by saying, "Now, if all is said and done, shall we proceed to the new accommodation we have prepared for you, Miss Scarlet?" She heard him and clenched her fist in anger and turned towards Liam, but he wasn't even looking at her. All dejected, she stomped her feet and went inside the guest room to get her stuffs. She randomly picked a few essentials in her suitcase and stomped out. But before that, she glanced at Liam once again. She saw that his demeanor had completely changed in a few minutes. She didn't quite know what to say, so she just uttered a bye and walked ahead without waiting for any response, because she knew that it was never going to come in the first place. Once she was outside the house, Liam looked at David and said, "Good job." Dig out all the possible connections, and as for hacking the DNS server, leave that to me. Sure, Mister. Liam, I have noted of the suspicious IP address, and will email them to you. David said and was about to leave. No email any electronic medium. Write with a pen and paper, and give it to me tomorrow. Okay then. David said and left the house. The moment he left, Liam gasped for air. And touched the space between his eyebrows, all worried and muttered, "What the hell are you up to, Scarlet?" 
What are you up to? He stood there in silence for quite some time, trying to connect all the dots that had been scattered in front of him. There were a couple of missing blocks, and he was somehow unable to trace them no matter what. But he knew that all that he needed was time. All that he had to do was to buy some time. He was lost in his thoughts, when suddenly his phone buzzed. It was Irene. He was surprised as to why she was calling him when she was in the house. He picked up the cowl and started walking towards his bedroom. Hey, what happened? Why are you calling me on phone, Cal? Liam asked and entered the room, but she was nowhere inside. Where are you? Liam asked her. I am in the washroom, Irene stuttered. Okay. And, he asked because as was still confused he didn't know why she was calling. But she didn't reply to his question. Al confused Liam disconnected the cowl and knocked on the bathroom door. Do you need something like clothes or any stuff? I can give you my t-shirt or something, he said. Still, there was no response from her. So he thought for a while and spoke again. Hum. There are dryer clothes to the sink. In case you need to dry something. He was hating this conversation. Oh. Okay, thanks, she answered from the inside. That was all that she needed right at that point. Okay, then, I will get you a t-shirt of mine. Liam said and rushed immediately towards his walk-in closet. He picked up a black basic gym, t-shirt, first by then he turned back to his closet, and picked up a white shirt for her instead. A playful smile spread on his face. He went back to the door and knocked again. I got you a shirt, he said. She sent her tiny little hand, outside from the door, to pick up the shirt that he wanted to give her. You get dressed and I will make a hot cup of coffee for you to drink, he said and marched into the kitchen. He was a bit worried, though as Scarlet had earlier ransacked his house downstairs, completely alone with the kitchen. So he wasn't sure if the coffee machine had survived. But luckily it had he rushed and made two cups of coffee and then went back upstairs. She was out from the washroom and she was patting her hair dry with the towel. Al her hair was pushed to one side of her shoulder, just the way he liked it. He could see drops of water running down her neck, and for a moment, he felt like he was going to drop the coffee and devour her. But somehow he regained his composure and entered inside. But all that he focused on was her. The bare smooth skin of her tight, he read painted toes. Her curves and her edges were swooning him every passing second. He didn't know if he could restrain himself any more. He cleared his throat just to make her aware that he was in the room. The moment she heard him she dropped the towel on the floor and again hurried to pick it up. Al confused then she dropped it on the table. He saw her tugging the hem of the shirt and was continuously pulling it down. She looked quite uncomfortable as her eyebrows were raised up. Hey, are you okay? What happened? He asked all concerned and kept the coffee mug on the side table. Um, your shirt, isn't it a bit too short? She said and hung her head low. She had never in her life wore such short clothes. Liam looked at her with a smirk on his face and said, No, it's just the perfect amount of short. Just the way I like it. His words hit her heart and made her blush as red as a fresh tomato's. She tugged her hair behind nervously. But if Scarlet sees me like this then, she will not feel okay. Can't you get any of her clothes for me? She asked him, feeling shy. Well, she doesn't live here any more, so I can't help you with that. He spoke with a straight face and looked at her, wanting to see the way she will react to the news. She raised her head with her mouth open in surprise.